All right, let's get started. Today we're going to be tying a uh, Lowe's Gray Nymph. It's a pretty little fly, looks very, very buggy. Not a complicated tie. Uh, we picked this pattern because it introduces you to a, uh, a new method of tying. And I'll talk about that in a, in a minute. Uh, there's not a lot of YouTube background on, on the Lowe's Gray Nymph. But it's a pretty easy tie. The hook I'm using, you can see, is a size 12 uh, 1XL Nymph hook. I'm going to be using uh, 20 thousandths of lead, the lead weight 20 thousandths. For the tail and the beard on that fly, I'm going to be using uh, partridge feathers, uh, barbs. The body, I'm using a lighter medium, medium hairs mask for the body. I'm going to be using a small gold wire for a rib that helps keep the uh, uh, dubbing material in place. And for thread, I'm using uh, ADOT uh, Vivas Black Thread. The tying steps are, uh, I'm going to show you those. Since this is a nymph, it's a, a sinker fly, I'm going to use some lead. I'm going to put some lead wraps on here. I use probably eight or ten wraps. Break that off and I'm going to use the pigtail. I'm going to too cheap to cut that stuff off. I'm going to use it, get it on my hook, and I want that lead centered between the bend and the eye of the hook. To attach it, I'm going to be using my 8 aught thread. I like to attach it from the rear going forward. I'm going to make a few wraps at the bend. I'm going to get rid of my tag end on my thread. And I found that I, I like this method. If once I get into that lid, it's not going to move. And I'm going to wrap that up, go back down toward my eye, come back up. And I'm just going to fill in some body width with just my thread wraps. I want my body to be nice and full, and if I have a lot of thread wraps that cover my lead and taper from bend to lead and I have hook to lead, it makes a, a nice contoured body. I might wish I had used 6 out lead. I wouldn't have quite as many wraps to do, but this is what I had on my nor bobbin, so that's what I'm using. To build that up, taper it so that it's thicker in the middle and tapered on both the bend and the eye of the hook end. I'm going to try and cover that lead up a little bit more, build that body up just a little, little bit more. I don't want a gap. I'm getting pretty close here that I think it'll work. Okay, I'm going to first thing I'm going to tie in will be the tail and I'm going to be using some barbs from a, a partridge. You see the barbs here and I'm just going to pull out a kind of a wad of them pull that off and I'm going to tie those on. I want it to extend back from the back of the hook about the, the gap of the hook distance, maybe a little bit more. That's going to be pretty close. So I'm going to go ahead and attach that, tie it in. I'm going to trim off some of that stuff at the front. Fill that body in a little bit more with that. And the next thing I'm going to tie in is my gold wire. It's a size small gold wire. You can see it. 
I'm going to tie that in along the side of my hook. Get it attached good and I'm going to drop it down toward the bottom. And get that wire out of my way. Now, <clears throat> the thing we're going to, uh, that is new today, is using a, a dubbing whirl. I like uh, to use a dubbing whirl like this. It has a short shank, and when you make your dubbing loop, if you have a longer shank, it sometimes makes it difficult to spin without hitting the bottom of your, your tying base. So I'm going to make a, oh, about a three and a half, four inch loop with my thread. I come up here, and I like to go around the bottom of that loop and tie it in so that I know it's going to be where I want it. I moved it kind of out of place, so I'm going to back it up a little bit. Now I've got my dubbing loop, and I'm going to use the dubbing twirl, get it in place, and I'm going to get my thread out of the way and up front to where I would be tying off the body. Oh, I have liked to use a little bit of uh, Overton's Wonder Wax. I'm just going to put a little bit on my thread, and I found that it really helps when I start attaching my hair's mask. I'm going to slip that kind of in between those loops. I don't want it too bulky, but I want to have quite a bit inside my dubbing loop. I'm kind of kind of squeezing it, spreading it out as I go into the middle. I'm going to get some more down here at the bottom. And when I've got my dubbing loop pretty well filled, move this back a ways, that's as far back as I can get it, and I'm going to just twirl that. Let's take up some make sure it's in there good. The advantage of a dubbing loop is it allows you to get pretty quickly a nice full twist of dubbing. Now I'm going to just start trying to lay that up here on the bottom, on the body, and I'm going to build that up. And if, if you think maybe you, you may not have enough, don't panic because you can always make a second dubbing loop if you are just a little bit short. So I, it's going to be close. I may be a little bit short. We'll see. Looking like I might be. So what I'm going to do, since I'm a little bit short, I'm going to take my bobbin and I'm going to go back. I'm going to tie this off. And then I'm going to clip this off. And then I'm going to make a second short dubbing loop. I'm going to make a loop like I did before. I'm going to go around, make sure it's compressed at the, uh, the top. And then I'm going to get my thread out of the way, get my dubbing loop out, and I'm going to tie this off again like I did before. I'm going to put a little bit more Overton's dubbing wax on my thread. Now I see I've got some twists together at the top, so I'm going to try and untwist those. And I'm going to start loading the loop again with my hair's mask. And I don't need I don't need a whole lot, but I I can always cut off 
any extra I have. I've got it in place. Make sure it's kind of in the middle. I'm going to twirl my dubbing loop one more time. Well, that one didn't turn out as well as I hoped. But I'm forward of where I want to be, so that real thin stuff, I'm just going to use that as a, a first level base. Now I got more of my dubbing the size I need it, and I'm going to bring it forward. I'm going to tie it off. Don't want to crowd the eye too much. Still have to form a head. And that's going to be in the way. I'm going to get rid of that while I can. Tie that off. Get rid of the extra. And I may have crowded the eye a little bit on this one. I don't know if I can recover from that or not. I think I can. Get rid of my dubbing whirl. I'm going to kind of pull all that stuff back. And I'm going to see if I want to have room for a nice eye. I'm going to half hitch that. And get that out of the way. Now I'm going to take my gold wire and I'm going to counter wrap that. Make my wraps evenly across the body. It helps keep that body in place that wants to kind of slip out a little bit tie off my gold thread and trim that with my junk scissors and I have one step left you have to put the beard on the fly. So I'm going to turn my vise up upside down, lock it in place, and I'm going to grab some more strands of uh, partridge. And I'm going to use a different feather. That one is a bit kind of kind of used up. I'm going to get some strands off of this other little partridge feather I have. Maybe a few more if I can sneak them out. Okay, I'm going to trim those off. And I want the beard to just about hit the end of the hook point. Make a, an easy wrap and hope to get it on top. That looks pretty good. Now I'm going to trim my tag ends of that off. my vise back side up, right side up again and I'm going to form a neat little head whip finish that Trim that. And we have a pretty buggy looking Lowe's Gray Nymph.